In this video, we're going to talk about some smaller but still significant features in Adobe Captivate 12.3 update. Normally I try to stick to one topic per video, but these are three small little things that we get when we update Adobe Captivate from 12.2 to 12.3. So let's take a look. Okay, so prior to 12.3, if you wanted to use individual slides from any of the Quick Start projects, you could easily do that. Let's open up a new project here and I'll just show you that real quick. So if I clicked on the new slide and went down to assets, I would see all of the Quick Start projects that are available. And if I select one, I could go through and select individual pages and insert those into my existing project. That's fine. But what if you wanted to start with a complete ready to go quick start project, all the slides and customize it for your needs? Well, that's something that 12.3 now gives you. Let's click on the home button right here and open a new instance of Adobe Captivate. I'll just drag it over to this window here and we can go ahead and close this first one. What you get is a new link in your welcome screen of Adobe Captivate right down here, Quick Start Projects. If I click on those, I'll now be presented with a list of all the Quick Start Projects that Adobe is making available to you. And if you wanted to use sort of all the slides that are part of a particular design or look and feel, you could select that quick start project and it would open up for you ready for you to customize as you see fit. Of course, like any Captivate project, I can move slides around from one position to another and I can edit all of this content and customize it for the needs that I have right now. The next feature in Adobe Captivate 12.3 update is not so much a feature that you're going to physically use, it's nothing for you to click on. It's nothing for you to modify or adjust. It really is just an improvement in how the software works. For accessibility purposes, web pages are designed with headings like heading one, H1, heading two, H2, and so on. And of course, these show up as benefits to people using assistive technology such as screen readers. And now what's happening behind the scenes, you don't get to see anything here, the title and subtitle components of any of your slides in Adobe Captivate will now include the heading capabilities and make your e-learning course much more accessible than it was with prior versions of Adobe Captivate. When it comes to slides like this one here where you've got multiple objects, it's going to work from top to bottom, left to right. So any kind of multiple titles or multiple subtitles will be read in that particular order. But otherwise, it's just something that's an improvement to Captivate, nothing for you to actually change. Now, let's say for a second I've gone through and I've changed some colors on this particular slide, specifically to the fonts and, and maybe other things as well and I've just mucked up my theme in Adobe Captivate. Well, that's the next feature I wanna talk about that's included with Adobe Captivate 12.3. If you go into the project properties, you may already know that you can edit themes as you see them here. So in this case here, I've already mucked this up. I've changed the colors. I'd like to revert it back to the way it was when I started working on this project. So I can go into the edit theme section and what you can see down here is reset entire project. If I click this little switch down here and go ahead and apply all the changes that I've overridden with my own colors, revert back to what they were in the first place. And don't forget, of course, that there are some bigger features that are included in the all new Adobe Captivate 12.3 update. You can find those from the link right up here. I've got bigger videos on those. Namely, what you're looking for is the new capability to review your e-learning, to send it out for review. Your reviewers don't even need to have Adobe Captivate installed. All they need is a web browser and an internet connection. 
You also get the ability to export your closed captions and then import them back into Adobe Captivate. Also, you can import in your question slides from a CSV or comma separated value file. And that way you can share those files with your stakeholders and your subject matter experts, and they can even edit those files before you add them to Adobe Captivate. Finally is the enhanced image editing capabilities. In the past, when you had to edit your images, you'd have to look at desktop, tablet, and mobile all separately. Now they've combined that into a single user interface, so it's a lot easier for you to look at all of your responsive design layouts for your images at a single glance. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I come out with a new video every week on Adobe Captivate or some other e-learning related topic. And don't forget to also like and share this video with all your Captivate friends. See you next time. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel. And of course, that's not all. Adobe Captivate Update 12.3 uh, includes some bigger features where I've done some individual videos on, and you can find those. <laughs> you can find those up here, and that's done.